los otros la fiebre y el sudor de la agonía y para mí cuatro balas cuando esté clareando el día Manuel Flores va a morir eso es moneda corriente morir es una costumbre que sabe tener la gente mañana vendrá la bala y con la bala el olvido lo dijo el sabio Merlín morir es haber nacido y sin embargo me cuesta decirle adiós a la vida hypothetical a meeting that never happened but can be claimed it did is there any meeting like this a fake one that can be said to have happened there are a few surprisingly these belong to a special category of event often they are undated abstract and empty of much substantial content passings in the street which were assumed to have happened due to chance. But what about waiting for dinner? Two massive names of the 1960s, one too early and one too late. This one can be considered the crossing of Argentine literature and English rock and roll. It happened in Spain in 1982. Or it did not happen in Spain in 1982. That is part of the story's charm. The moment is relatively unknown in the Anglosphere, but is a sort of urban legend in the Hispanosphere. Why? Its veracity has some controversy. More than a little. Either way, the conversation has had its impact. Both before and after it maybe did not happen. One says it happened, one says it never did, and the other is dead. The setting is the Weston Palace Hotel in Madrid, 1982. One is English rock star Mick Jagger, or 1943. He would have been about 39 at the time. He was on tour in Europe. The other is Argentinian writer Jorge Luis Borges. Born 1899, he would have been about 82 at the time. He was also on tour in Europe. The third participant was Borges' secretary, Maria Kodama. She would have been about 45 at the time. Their conversation would have lasted for all of a few minutes, if even more than one. It was when the Rolling Stones, or Stone here, met their fan, Jorge Luis Borges. Comical little geezer. You look funny when you're 50. According to interviews with Kodama, the story goes along these lines. While traveling about Europe, the blind Borges and Kodama were staying at the Hotel Palace, the Western Palace in Madrid, in Spain. Prior to dinner, or to be picked up for dinner, the two were waiting in the lobby of the hotel. Out of nowhere, a man kneels down beside Borges, takes his hand, and says, Maestro, I admire you. Borges, a little astonished, according to Kodama, says to the man, And who are you, senor? The man responds, I'm Mick Jagger. Borges replies, Ha ha, one of the Rolling Stones. Mick Jagger, now astonished himself, almost faints and asks, How, maestro, do you know me? Borges tells him, Yes, due to Maria. The brief episode ends there with a few pleasantries. The question, did this actually happen? One notices the claim is attached to Maria Kodama's name alone. Whenever Kodama tells the story, she rarely mentions any exact dates or year. Though, one can actually line the dates up to a satisfactory period where this could have happened in 1982. It has to be an inferred range from the Rolling Stones' European touring schedule, though. Borges was also traveling about Europe at the same time. Where could the Stones and Borges have coincided? It is a period of only about a week in Spain, but it has to have been in 1982 if it did happen. The fact Kodama says the meeting happened in Madrid at the Weston Palace Hotel is enough to narrow down the dates. The first time the Stones performed in Madrid was July 7th and July 9th, 1982. All their appearances in Spain afterwards would have been after Borges' death in 1986. They played at the Vincente Caldron Stadium, which was only a few minutes away from the Weston Palace. So, it would have made sense for Mick Jagger, if not the entire band, to stay at the hotel. 
The hotel is famous for rooming rock stars, and the Stones were known to stay there on occasion. Jagger would have shown up between July 3rd and either July 6th or July 7th. There's some claims Jagger appeared at the Moulin Rouge nightclub in Vienna on July 3rd, not the famous French Moulin Rouge burlesque, though this could be an error, but this is also unverified in general. The Stones did play in Vienna on July 3rd anyways, so for Mick Jagger's presence in Spain in 1982, that gives a maximum range of July 3rd to July 10th, and a minimum of about July 7th to July 10th. Borges' stay at the hotel is harder to verify for certain, though. It is known the famous author was visiting Europe in the summer of 1982. He was present in Ireland for Bloomsday, a celebration of Irish writer James Joyce, on June 16th, 1982. That would have put him in easy distance to be in Spain for July 1982. The Borges Center does claim he was in Spain in 1982, but does not clarify exactly when. I did send an email to the Center about this, but have not received a response back yet. There was a chance Borges was in Madrid between July 3rd and July 10th, but this is far less certain than Mick Jagger's presence at the same time. Does this prove the meeting happened? No, not at all. But it is a range in which it could have happened. As said, the only source for the story is Borges' secretary and later wife, Maria Kodama. Kodama has been telling this story since at least the 90s, but it is difficult to establish an exact date of when she first mentioned it. The earliest international publication for Kodama's version of the Borges Jagger story is a BBC Mundo article dated September 13th, 2008, Borges Ese Gran Desconocido. It is the source for the translated version of the story used here. But, as said, Kodama has definitely been telling the story in interviews for at least a decade prior to 2008. Mick Jagger was asked about the claim by a fan in 1998, so the story was in circulation well before it was publicized to a wider audience in 2008. Beside the BBC article, and a few other Spanish news sources, there does exist a television interview with Kodama where she repeats a version of the encounter. I do not know when or where this is from though. It is either a Spanish, as in Spain, or Argentine TV station. Probably either a news or documentary program. If any viewers know the icon slash program, that would be very helpful. That is not to take Maria Kodama as infallible. Kodama and the Borges estate have received criticism for their handling of the author's legacy in some regards. One major point of contention is selling the rights to new English translations of Borges' work despite the fact Borges assisted Norman Thomas Di Giovanni in producing earlier English translations. This has left Di Giovanni's translations in legal limbo to this day. The only reason I mention that is because it is a prickly detail that will come up in arguments usually. That is also not to say Maria Kodama is lying either. Borges could speak English due to his English grandmother. He simply preferred not to translate his own work due to a belief he could not do the English language justice in writing. A few Spanish sources for the meeting claim Mick Jagger spoke to Borges in Spanish with an English accent, but Kodama has never claimed that. It is a detail added by later reporters. Mick Jagger cannot speak Spanish, as shown by how he had to read off a note card in Argentina and have questions translated for the band. Estamos muy contentos de estar de vuelta en Argentina, uno de nuestros lugares favoritos. <laughs> Anyways, and we're very pleased to see Borges you. did speak fluent, if a bit antiquated, Victorian he called it, English. It is not difficult to imagine Borges having a quick conversation with Mick Jagger in English. He gave long, in-depth interviews in English, so a brief conversation would not have been difficult for him even in old age. Then it is not hard to imagine Borges relating the story to Kodama in Spanish. She tells the story in Spanish because she's only ever been asked about it by Spanish reporters and news sources. Then the anecdote of the meeting gets repeated a lot from there. It is also not so outlandish Borges could have known who Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones were. Outside Kodama's statements or influence, it is known Borges picked up a taste for jazz and American music in Spain from expats during the late 1910s, early 1920s. In Argentina, he often wrote reviews of movies for home journals and admitted he liked cheap sci-fi and pulp noir novels. Along with a well-attested lifelong Anglophilia, he had an avant-garde taste rock and roll would have appealed to even in old age. Kodama has said Borges liked Pink Floyd, The Beatles, and The Rolling Stones. He preferred music that was fun and vital, particularly liking medieval music, 
Brahms, Bach, folk music such as the Argentine Milongos, but he did not like Beethoven and believed Carlos Gardel had ruined the tango. On his birthday, instead of Happy Birthday, he preferred The Wall by Pink Floyd be played instead. What about the Rolling Stones then? The one ultimate issue that has been ignored until this point. Jagger said it never happened. Uh, no, I would have liked to have met him. I don't think that's possible this trip. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, he was. <laughs> I know that. Uh, <laughs> no, he was a fantastic writer. Introduced to, uh, I think it was very popular uh, in in Britain in the in the 60s when his books were first published in translation. So he's very well known in, in that time, and I read a lot of his things then, but I never met him. No, esto nunca sucedió. Me Though he does not outright reject Kodama's statements, Jagger's statement shoots a pretty big hole in the story, if not outright disproving it. If one believes it, it comes down to a disagreement between Maria Kodama and Mick Jagger. Kodama has said it happened in multiple interviews, Jagger has said he never met Borges. Borges was dead by the time the story became popular, so do not go looking for him to be the tiebreaker. In spirit at least, Borges and Jagger did cross paths several times throughout the 1960s. While Borges was an established author in Buenos Aires, his rise to global popularity coincided with the rise of the Rolling Stones to fame in the music world. Both appealed to the psychedelic 1960s, then the surreal 1970s. It was the translations of Borges' works that would bring him international fame in the 1960s due to publicity garnered from a French audience. Mick Jagger read the English translations of Borges in Britain. Another also read Borges in the 1960s, director Donald Camel. Camel, along with Nicholas Rowe, would go on to create the 1970s psychedelic gangster flick, Performance. A new wave inspired movie actually starring Mick Jagger with plenty of Jorge Luis Borges references. This is probably where the common association of the two names accidentally began. The movie overall is a topic too big for this video, but it has to have an obligatory mention. It entangled Mick Jagger and Borges together. Jagger stars as a decadent pop star, opposite Fox as an East End gangster on the run, in a decayed mansion designed after Borges' short stories. It is full of mirrors, knives, and unstable identity. Also a memo from Turner Music video. The entire movie is also probably a metaphor for the Minotaur's Labyrinth, which Borges wrote endlessly about. But there are a lot of seedy details around this movie, like how the film is part of why Jagger and Keith Richards have such a love-hate relationship. It was incredibly controversial in the 1970s, having to be re-edited several times and slapped with an X rating. John Simon's review for the New York Times, titled The Most Loathsome Film of All, uses this description. It is all mindless intellectual pretension and pathologically reveled in gratuitous nastiness, and it means nothing. The filmmakers' sensibilities are so jaded, their senses so atrophied, that I doubt they could even feel the swift kick they so richly deserve. If one wants to read an excellent, in-depth article on the movie, check out Shipwreck Library's expansive Borges film, Performance. I will, though, list all the direct Borges references to keep it simple. Early on, the character Harry Flowers can briefly be seen reading Borges, a personal anthology. In conversation with Chaz, James Fox, Turner, Mick Jagger, references Plan Ukbar Orbis Tertius. An Orbis Tertius. Later on is the famous scene of Mick Jagger as Turner, reading from Borges the South, probably from the same copy of a personal anthology from earlier. After, Turner drops slash throws a knife, which is probably a reference to gaucho lore. At the end, a picture of Borges is shot. It's more complicated than that, but it does happen. Borges in general was also interested in gangsters. See Monkeysman, Purveyor of Inequities. That is definitely not all of the more subtle references, but those are the ones the general viewer will notice. The movie is pretty easy to find online if anyone wants to watch it. Be aware though, there was a reason this movie got an X rating. The violence is minor, but the sex is… not. Enclosure 2 performance, it has long been rumored that, before committing suicide in 1996, director Donald Campbell's last words were, Can you see the picture of Borges? That though is another urban legend. Odds are the meaning of Jorge Luis Borges, Maria Kodama, and Mick Jagger is more urban legend than fact. Performance associating the names of the author and rock star had a hidden hand in popularizing the connection of the two names. Even Maria Kodama admits that. 
It is particularly interesting to note what event the Borges Jagger meeting almost coincides with if we take the date to have been in 1982 the Falklands War, or Guerra de las Malvinas. The war officially concluded on June 14, 1982, then Borges and Jagger unofficially met a month later in July of that year. Or maybe they didn't. Though, in story, it is not exactly Borges and Jagger concluding a peace treaty between their nations. Both had too much respect for the other, even if they did not meet in person. As much like a Borges story or Rolling Stones song. The personalities, the strangeness, the symbolism, and the meeting of two worlds in a place foreign to both of them. It becomes a debate about what, if anything, exactly happened. One last note. Borges once said he read Don Quixote first in English. Upon reading it in the original Spanish, he said it sounded something like a bad translation. Bad translation? Who knows. Ah! I see what you did there. I'd like to give a ringin' in the new year thank you to my supporters, Fraser and the Gel Samini family. Y la ciudad ahora.